All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Yahweh be named Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, Ba'in, Ha'ba, Sham name. Yahweh Shai be named Only Begotten Son, meaning He delivered, He saved, Rakakwadash, Holy Spirit. Double honors to the Apostle, Holy Great Most Number of Wealth, Peace, Blessed to like the Israel. Shalom and above all, back up on the list of the Spirit of Power, Yahweh Shai, Shai, Low Will, this video is edifying. Okay, so I just want to do is get right into it through the spirit. I was uh, writing down some Hebrew characters, and um, I came across, you know, the, this word right here. Okay, as you can see, I have the Hebrew alphabet. I have the uh, Paleo Hebrew on the top, and then you have the modern Assyrian Hebrew on the bottom, which pretty much the same characters, or rather same sounds from the characters, but just different images, if you will, okay, for the characters, you know, as you can see, the ah, the ah, the ba, the ba, ga, ga, you know, you see it, okay, so when you look at the modern Hebrew, all you have to do pretty much is convert it to the Paleo Hebrew, what it is in the Paleo Hebrew, now sometimes you're going to see different characters like the Taza, all right, like let's say if Taza is in the middle or the beginning of a word, you will go with the top one, all right? This character right here, all right? But if it's at the end of the word, like, uh, you know, a Hebrew word with the ending, ending with the word Taza or the character Taza, then it would be this one. You see, that looks like a Y kind of, all right? But the one above, it looks like a Y and a Z mixed together. You know, um, and then let's say, for instance, you have a ka, okay, or k a. At the end of the word, it would be, you know, that one on the bottom. But if it was in the middle or in the beginning, it would be the top one. You see, but in the Hebrew, the the Paleo Hebrew, what's what's different about the Paleo Hebrew? Let's say you have the word taza at the end of a of a sentence, you're just going to leave it, you know, or let's say that you had to have a cutoff sound with the ka, you would put the connector. All right. Let's see if I could um, give an example of that. You know, I didn't, I didn't even really plan on doing a Hebrew lesson, but it is all through the spirit. Let's say I have a word Barak, which means bless. So I got the ba. I got the ra, and then the ka. Okay, well, you know, sometimes that wasn't the best analogy, but anyways, let me use it anyway. Sometimes you'll see it can be written like this, baraka or barak, all right, which you'll see the ka like this, or sometimes you might see it like this. with the connector, all right? I believe the bottom one is the proper way, but, you know, for the sake of the example, just using this right now, okay? So with that connector right here, this connector that I'm circling, that cuts off the extra sound from this ka character. If I didn't have the connector, Let's say I didn't have the connector for some reason. And the word was, now the word goes from Barak to Baraka. Okay, Baraka. You know, it's a lot from my handwriting, but you see, because the connector is not there. But now you put the connector there. Now that cuts off the extra sound, you see. Uh, I'll try to give another example, Lord willing. Um, let's see if I can give another example. Let's see what's a good what's a good word to use. Okay. Oh, let's use the Hebrew word ak for brother, right? Ak. This means brother. Ak means brother. In the Hebrew. All right. 
So now, how we would write it, you would put the a, the cha, okay? But you need the connector so that it can cut off the extra sound from the cha, because if it was, so now it's like this, because you have the connector. So with that connector, it cuts off the extra cha sound. Okay, so this is what it would look like if you didn't have the connector. But it wouldn't be pronounced ak, it would be pronounced aha. Okay, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the word ak. So we need the a ah and the ha, but we need the connector in between to cut off the sound. Whichever one the connector lands on, so let's say it started from here, but it landed on this character, that's the sound that gets cut off, all right? But nonetheless, the point of this lesson, just wanted to give the little dynamic through the spirit. You know, it's all through the spirit. I wasn't planning on touching on that, but the point of this lesson was I want to go into the name Yahweh Shai in particular, because I was I was writing down some Hebrew, and I went to Google Translate because I was trying to figure out the word how to write the word Afa. Because sometimes I've seen brothers, uh, you know, me myself, I, I guess I, I, you know, not I guess I did do that, but I guess you know I was incorrect. But nonetheless, I used to write the Hebrew word for you as like this Afa, and sometimes you'll see brothers do that, you know. But apparently, it's actually written like this. Okay, which means you. All right. You know, I myself, I used to do it like this. And if brothers do it like that, I'm not going to be a stickler on it. You know, we're, the Lord's returning us back to our pure language. So, you know, we're still learning. Okay. But I believe the correct way, if I'm not mistaken, is written like so. And that means you in the Hebrew, right? So now I'm going through, and matter of fact, I'll just write it. I'll write it in the Hebrew as well so that brothers can get a visual or any sisters out there. Okay, so you almost did it again. <laughs> okay, afa. So in the Hebrew, it would be a, tha, and then that extra ha, but since it has the cutoff sound, you get the connector. So now you have a fa like that. But if I didn't have the connector, let's just say for some reason I didn't have the connector. It would look like this, or it would be pronounced like this. Afa ha. All right, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted the word afa. You see? But nonetheless, point being, put the connector. Now you have afa. Okay? There it is. But so so through the spirit, when I was looking through this on on you know Google Translate, I was playing with it. And um I put in a couple words, like the heat, because cause I wanted to see how how accurate it was in comparison to the Paleo Hebrew. Okay, and now in the modern Assyrian Hebrew, Amalek uses this, they use the Yiddish. So you're gonna see those little dots and those vowels under the characters, don't mind those. Okay, because you know, there's certain sounds or letters that are not in the actual Paleo Hebrew alphabet. So you can't, you have to kind of learn to pick the meat from the bones when it comes to certain Hebrew words in comparison to the actual Paleo Hebrew and the Yiddish, you know? Because there's no letter V, O, U, E, J, okay, in the uh, Paleo Hebrew, okay? I believe there's no letter F, you know? So there's certain letters that are not in the Paleo Hebrew, but there are in the Yiddish, okay? Or the Hebrew that Amalek speaks over there in Israel today, you see? So, you know, you kind of just have to pick the meat from the bones, but nonetheless, I was going through it, right? 
and I wanted to see how close it was. So you have the word in, which in in the Hebrew is ba, okay? Simply just ba, and as you can see, the character right there, ba, modern Hebrew. Ba, and then look down in the modern Hebrew column, ba. You see, so that's correct. Let's try another one. Let's try the word the. The word the is ha in the Hebrew, modern Assyrian character, ha. Go back to the paleo, ha. All right, the one that looks like a backwards F. Ha, ha, you see? That means the in the Hebrew, okay? So those, those are two good examples. I was like, okay, that's pretty accurate. I wanted to try the next one. Let's try the word name. The word is, the, the Hebrew word for the word name is sham, okay? And it's funny how, you know, Esau lets you hear it in English. Name. But in Hebrew, there's no, uh, there's no sound for it. They expect you to put your input, okay? But there's no, there's no uh, sound for it, okay? And some of these words can, can apply to more than one word, depending on the context of the sentence. But nonetheless, through the spirit, that's just what I'm working with right now. So now I wanted to take a step further, and I was like, okay, let's see if they got the name of the Lord. So it was in my spirit to put the name of the Lord. Let me try this real quick. I put I put Yahweh Shai, right? Which is the name of the only begotten son, meaning he saves, he delivered. Okay. I put Yahweh Shai, and as you can see, they put a completely different uh translation of it. They got the Ya, the Ah, the Ha, Wa, Wa, Ah, Sha, Ah, 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 Yah. That's not how you spell Yahweh Shai's name, okay? But let Esau tell you that's how you, see? Yahweh Shai. But there's no V in the Paleo Hebrew, so that's not his name, okay? So now, let's go type the word Joshua. That's how you spell the Lord's name in Hebrew. Yah, ha, wa, sha, I. Okay, Yahweh Shai. You see, that's how you spell it. Okay, this is how it's written. Yah, so I kill. Yah, ha, wa, sha, I. Okay? Yahweh Shai. But now here's another example of why we need the connector. Okay? Because let's say we didn't have the connector. Off face value, this isn't Yahweh Shai. This is. Yahweh Sha'ai. Yahweh Sha'ai. But that's not how Yahweh Sha'ai's name is spelled, you see? So that's why it's important to have the connector. Now, sometimes you'll see on brother's garments or jewelry or videos, you might see it written like this, and that's fine. You just have to know how to decode it. But... If we're going according to the proper, I guess you could say punctuation, for lack of better words, it's actually written like this. Okay? Yaha was shy. All right? Same thing with the Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh. And a lot of times you'll see it written like this. They also, Esau also calls it tetragrammaton. You know, they, they say it's the, 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 the letters yo hey yo yo hey va ha or yo hey wa ha but it's really yahweh okay and yahweh means he exists he to be he is all right but without the connector pretty much 
for face value, it's like this without the connector. That's not the most size name. The most size name is ya is not Yahawaha. Okay, it's Yahawa. All right. So that's why it's important to put that connector. So now it went from Yahawaha to Yahawa. All right, Yahawa. See, same thing for Yahawashai. Let's lock you. Yaha wa sha I Yaha wa shy. All right, that's it. Okay, but nonetheless, that's why it's important to put the connectors there. Okay, the connectors are these, and whatever the connector lands upon, that is what's going to cut off that extra sound okay connector landed upon the ha the ha character got cut off the connector landed upon the sha the sha got cut off you see so that's that's what it is but now like i said going back to the website google translate you write the name joshua and it gives you the actual name of the lord but you see that's esau playing trickery okay Esau playing trickery. All right. You see it says Joshua, but in the Hebrew it's written Yahweh Shai. That's the way to write it. And now let's prove it, right? You see how it says Yahweh Shai? Let's go to the count the stock of the uh, alphabet. You got the Yah. You got the ha, you got the wa, you got the sha, and then you got the i. Now, the i is over here. Now, when it comes to the Syrian Hebrew, you're not going to find the connector. Okay, sometimes you'll find letters that have the ending sound, so it might be a different uh, character so you'll know okay that's the ending sound so that's kind of like what takes the place in the connector but sometimes for certain words it's supposed to have the end it's supposed to like take away the ending sound but you're not going to find a different character to take that away so you know it'll be written like a certain way but it's not pronounced that way so that's why you got to know the, that's why you got to have that discernment to know the two unless that's the point see that's how you write that's how you write your Shai's name in the modern assyrian hebrew so Esau right there goes to show you that the name of the Lord technically is Yahweh Shai, but Joshua is a transliterate a transliteration of the name Yahweh Shai. Okay. But what's funny is when you write the name Jesus, this is what it translates to. Yahshawai. Yahshawai. Alright. But that's not Yahweh Shai's name. And Neither is Jesus his name. But in the scriptures, he's known as Jesus. That's Esau trying to throw off the, you know, the, the trail, okay? The scent and the trail, so to speak. Esau's trying to throw a little monkey, uh, throw a wrench in the, in the engine, so to speak. All right? Esau's trying to throw you off. So when you put the name Jesus, he'll give you a different thing in the Hebrew. But when you put the name Joshua, he actually gives you the right name in the uh, modern Hebrew. Okay, but what's funny is people will say, oh, Joshua means Yeshua, right? Okay, so let's write the word Yeshua. It goes back to what? Yahshua, meaning what? Going back to what was written earlier for the name Jesus. I'm going to show you Yeshua isn't the name either. Okay, so for all you jakes calling on Yeshua, you need to stop that. All you jakes calling on Jesus, you need to stop that. Or whatever false name you need to call upon the proper names okay not saying that the lord doesn't hear you but you know you don't want somebody to call you outside of your name so how much more the heavenly father's only begotten son and if you're not a and if you're not a doer of your house my child's will then the lord is not hearing your prayer as the scripture says john 9 31 proverbs 28 and 9 he that turns his ear away from hearing the law even his prayer shall be an abomination so you think you're praying before the lord but your prayer is really just going upon 
you know, uh, not necessarily deaf ears, because most I can hear you, but he's not going to entreat or inquire of you because, you know, you're not calling upon the right name. Now, there could, there could be times where most I, you know, hear your prayer answer for you because he's winking at your ignorance. Scriptures say, you know, I have girded thee, though thou has not known me. That's in the book of Isaiah. So sometimes the Lord can still come up, you know, a lot of times rather, but, you know, sometimes the Lord can still look out for you, answer your prayer, so to speak, or your supplication, even though you don't necessarily know him. Okay, but if you truly want to know him, you call upon that right name. Okay, and you and you do according to that name. You don't take that name in vain. You actually live that life. You know, because you got dudes calling on the right names, but they're not living right accordingly, man. And that's a whole nother story. But nonetheless, you see what they gave you when you read the word Yeshua. So that right there goes to show you that that's not it. So now when you go to the scriptures, these are a few scriptures. Okay, as you can see, it's written. Je uh, Jesus, but a few a uh, few of these scriptures that I have, except for Matthew one and twenty one, these are actually talking about Joshua. Okay, Joshua the Ephraimite, you know the son of Nun. Okay, who was the successor of Moses? All right, the one who was written of in the book of Joshua. All right, him Yahweh Shai and Joshua had uh, the same name. Okay. Matthew 1 and 21, which says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name. You see, it says Jesus, but really it's supposed to be Yahweh Shai. For he shall save his people from their sins. You see, so Yahweh Shai is the one saving us from our sins. Not Jesus. Not Yeshua. Yahweh Shai. All right, but look. You see, his name is Jesus, right? So now, these other scriptures, besides Matthew 1 and 21, is actually talking about Joshua. I want to show you that Jesus is a transliteration of the word Joshua, and Joshua is actually a transliteration of Yahweh Shai, but the name of the Messiah is not Joshua because the letter J didn't exist when Yahweh Shai walked on the scene. So what did his parents call him is the letter J didn't exist in his time frame. Okay? The letter J was, was, was created in the Renaissance language. John uh, Trissino. Okay? John Trissino... He uh, helped forward that Renaissance alphabet. Part of that was the letter J, which is one of the one of the youngest letters in the English alphabet. So how could that be Yahweh Shai's name? Okay, so his name isn't Yeshua. His name isn't Joshua. His name isn't Yeshua because there's no letter U. There's no letter E, V, O, F. All right, in the Paleo Hebrew. Okay, and the ancient Hebrew. So how could that have been his name? It wasn't. You see, this is um, Hebrews 4 and 8. It says, for if Jesus had given them rest, which is talking about Joshua from the Old Testament, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Right, because Joshua was supposed to bring Israel to their inheritance. Joshua was supposed to give Israel rest, right? But his form of rest was not the ultimate rest that was set up in prophecy, you know, in his perfection. That ultimate rest, talking about the kingdom of heaven, was for Yahweh Shai to usher that in. The true Yahweh Shai, because Joshua and Yahweh Shai had the same name, all right? And it says, uh, 1, Maccabees 1, uh, 1 Maccabees 2 and 55, it says, Jesus, talking about Joshua, for fulfilling the word was made a judge in Israel, right? Okay, when you read it in context, it's talking about Joshua, who came up after Moses, right? But look at the name, though. The name is, is Jesus. Why? Because that's that Greek transliteration, you see, but our Lord's name is not Jesus. This is Acts 7 and 45. It says, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus, talk about Joshua, into the possession of the Gentiles, talk about how we took over the heathen land, which was the land of Israel, which was allotted to us and prophesied unto us to have. But you had those Hamites uh, dwelling in the land of Israel. Okay, those different Canaanite nations. That's why it says into the possession of the Gentiles. Whom the Most High drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Yeah. Okay. Go on to show you that this talking about Joshua and the children of Israel taking over the land of Israel. Okay. Let's just see how the Most High chose the land for the people's sake, not the place, not the, not the people for the place sake. All right. That's in the second Maccabees. Let me get that real quick. Second Maccabees 5 and 19. It says, nevertheless, the Most High did not choose the people for the place sake, but the place for the people's sake. That's right. Okay, so the Lord chose the land of Israel 
for us. He didn't choose us for the land of Israel, you know. However, you know, that land is a special land, okay. And that's why the Most High is getting ready to uh, destroy all those nations that try to set foot in that land, you know, unjustly. Scripture speaks of how Jerusalem shall be a burdensome stone, you know, which spiritually can apply to the men of the Lord out here pushing his word, but also that land too, okay? Those nations that want to, you know, pretty much step foot in our land, they're going to get trapped up because of it. Just like how you, when you had the heathen back in the past, when uh, that one king kicked out the northern kingdom and was putting heathen in the land, what happened? The Most High uh, sent lions among them because, what to say, they knew not the manner of the God of the land. You know, when you're in that land of Israel, there's a, of course, throughout all the planet Earth, but especially in that land of Israel, there's a certain standard that's supposed to be upheld, and that standard is keeping the scriptures, you know, the law, such commandments, okay, the ways of righteousness, okay, because that land has a certain vibration to it. The Most High's eyes are constantly upon that land throughout all, throughout all the year. That's in a, I want to say Deuteronomy 11. Is it Deuteronomy 11? Yep, Deuteronomy 11 and 11 says, but the land, whether you go to possess it, talk about the land of Israel, it is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord, and that's a cut to Esau. <laughs> you know, but I'm sure there's a spiritual aspect to that too. It says, a land which the Lord, Yahweh, thy power careth for, the eyes of the Lord, thy power are always upon it from the beginning of the year, even to the end of the year. That's right, okay? What happened with Jacob, our forefather, when he came into that land? He said how he's seen the angels of the Most High ascending and descending upon it. And he, you know, Esau refers to it as a Jacob's ladder, okay? Which basically was that portal from the spirit realm to the earth, you know, was in Bethel, okay? Bath Allah, you know, or Bayath Allah, okay? Jacob, uh, Jacob was like, I knew not it was the place of the Most High, okay? See if I can get that preset. Oh, it's lucky. Call him Ashmashai, 1044. All right. <laughs> this is uh, Genesis 28 and... Uh, Start at verse 10, and Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set, and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And that goes to show you that our forefathers, you know, they weren't no 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 uh softies, man. He used a pillow for his uh he used a rock as his pillow, man. You know, our forefathers were hard body, okay. It says, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of the Most High ascending and descending on it. And the Lord, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, Yahweh, power of Abraham, thy father, and the power of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest thee, will I give it into thy seed. Talking about the land of Israel. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Right. Why is that? Because the nations are going to be followed, uh, following after our ways in the kingdom. They're going to be subject to the ways of righteousness. So that's going to lead to the to a blessing for them. Just like how Abraham was blessed and his servants as well. Okay. Which his servants were of the heathen. It says, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places where thou goest. And that's going to show you that uh, King David is... Uh, is uh, Jacob in the reincarnation because it said how the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went, you know? It says, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to, to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of the Most High. And this is the gate of heaven, right? So the land of Israel is, is, is a very major portal to the spirit realm. That's why 
a lot of judgment is going to go down that land. You know, because the wickedness that Esau, Edom, and the mother heathens are doing. It says, And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set, up, set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was called Luz at first. Why? Because the heathen were their dwelling there, so they had a different name for it. But Jacob called it Bethel. All right, so Lachia. Um, I want to get the Hebrew word for the word Bethel. Just to make sure what it is. Yep, Bayath Allah, I figured. All right, Bayath meaning house, Allah meaning God or power. All right, so house God or house of God, Bayath Allah. Okay, Bethel or Bath Allah is like daughter of God, you know. Lock you. All right. But really, it's by Yaf Allah. By Yaf Allah. By Yaf Allah. Okay. So there it is right there. You know. Just wanted to show that to the spirit because you saw it trying to throw it off. You, you type the name Yeshua, it gives you the same Hebrew characters as the name Jesus. Or you type the name Joshua, it gives you the same Hebrew characters as how your Hawashai's name is supposed to be written. But if you put the name Yahweh Shai straight up, it's just going to give you a completely different translation. You know, a completely different way to write it, which is not so. <laughs> okay. But uh, let's go ahead and um, uh, let's go ahead and get this last one, Lord willing, to talk about our forefather Joshua, which has the same name as Yahweh Shai. Okay. This is uh, Sirach Ecclesiastes 46 and 1. Jesus, talking about Joshua, the son of, of Nav, which is talking about the son of Nun, was valiant in the wars and was the successor of Moses in prophecies, who, according to his name, was made great for the saving of the elect of the Most High and taking vengeance of the enemies that rose up against them, that he might set Israel in their inheritance. And guess what? Yahweh Shai is coming back to do the same thing. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6, seeing it is a righteous thing with Yahweh Shai to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Yahweh Shai shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not the Most High and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And what's he going to do? He's going to bring the saints, the elect, to their inheritance and take vengeance upon the wicked. All right. So that's the point. You know, I just wanted to bring that out through the spirit. Okay. I think there's another one. I think there was one word. Moses changed his name. I know there's, I think there's a precept where Moses, it, it says how Moses changed Joshua's name. You know, because Joshua used to have a different name, but Moses changed his name. You know? Pretty sure there's a scripture like that. Numbers 13 and 16. All right. Yep. And I, the reason why I'm getting this is because it helps further hammer the point of the Lord's name. Numbers 13 and 16. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshea, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. All right. Which is really Joshua. Okay. But his name at first was uh, Oshea or Osea. 
or which means how a shine okay which means deliver you know how a shine but then moses changed it to yahawasha or joshua meaning he deliverer okay because that's what he did he delivered israel you know into their inheritance and it took vengeance upon the enemies who according to his name you know Sirach 46 so i wanted to bring that up through the spirit lord when this video was edifying i want to give all praise honor and glory to yahweh about sham yahushai about sham hakodaz of honesty possible is great most never well peace blessings collect the israel shalom and above all